Well, let's dial in my first guest, y'all. She's an actress and director, and you know her from that 70s show and Orange is the New Black. Now she has a new best-selling book called You and I as Mothers, A Raw and Honest Guide to Motherhood. It's Laura Prepon. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hello. I'm such a big fan. You are so oh talented. Oh, my God. You, too. Thank you so much for having me on. No, thank you. I saw your... I just don't ever see pictures. I'm never in the limelight ever, and I just see you in my head as a redhead. So I'm like seeing through the scene. I was like, I know Laura Peabody is, but this is not her. And I was like, you're like such a different human with dark hair. It's beautiful. It's so thank you. It's so weird. I, I mean, I did this because for Orange is the New Black. Yeah. And then when we, I was pregnant when we wrapped and then I couldn't change my hair color. And then I just gave birth a few months ago and now it's a pandemic and now I can't get my hair changed. Dude, my, I know my roots are, I'm just like, whatever. Um, so how is it going though? Speaking of Orange is the New Black, was that any kind of prep for quarantine time? Cause we, you know, we're stuck in one place. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, we, I mean, look, I was already pretty prepared. Um, I just with the whole, uh, that my baby was coming and everything, we were already planning on isolating and, yeah, I mean, I don't know if Orange really prepared me, but um, yeah, because that, you know, there's so many of us together all the time. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of, you know, the fact that I just had a baby, that really, you know, the fact that we were already planning on isolating, definitely, I think it made the transition a little yeah. Smoother. Yeah. Um, we we try to laugh when we can. It's hard, Kelly. Oh my gosh! No, the humor has yeah. gotten me through many uh, times. So I'm I'm with you with that. But I hear that you're to get you through times. We have something in common. You love games. Like you're competitive. Do you play <laughs> poker? Is that is? Did I hear it right that you play poker? That was that was another life, but yes. I oh, played, it's the time I when you were cool played. in your life before kids and everything. <laughs> I always say that. I'm like, oh, that was when I was cool and I did things. <laughs> I used to play so much. I mean, I played in the World Series twice. I was on the cover. That's of crazy. No, I was I was obsessed. I actually. I was on the cover of a poker magazine. Yeah. I was like, yeah, like I was totally. Oh, I, you're an actor though, so you're really good at bluffing. So I, I did pretty well. I did pretty well. I was really, really into it. But now with kids, I don't have time to go sit at a card table. Oh my gosh. No, I feel you. Her new book, y'all, is called You and I as Mothers, A Raw and Honest Guide to Motherhood. I feel like there is so many books out there and so many guides for, but there's not many, like I love your title and I love the, the vibe of it being like raw and real and like the ups and downs of everything. I feel like everything doesn't prepare you for all of that. Um, so what made you want to open up the way you did in your new book? Cause you're very honest about things that maybe people would never tell people. Yeah, I honestly, for me, I felt like there were all these books about pregnancy and there mm. were all these books, you know, leading you up to when you become a mother, but I didn't find any resources for me once I became a mother. And I was like, what about the rest of my life, you know? Yeah. Um, so for me, I felt like there really wasn't anything out there for us and there wasn't a resource for me. So I wrote the book I was looking for. That's I brilliant. interviewed a bunch of women in it to speak to all these common themes. Um, so the reader can find someone to relate to. Um, cause we all go through similar things, even if we uh, are, are at different stages of motherhood, it's not this isn't a postpartum book. It's for mothers of all ages. Yeah. No, I, I love that it's really honest. Um, I think that that's important. I also think it's important that you surround just being a mom, especially a, a, a young mom. And this is, I have young kids. Like, it's really important you have some sort of mom squad. Like, you have some, you, like, or even a friend squad. They don't have to be all moms, but just to understand, like, where you're coming from and, and to have that kind of, I don't know, that bond. Like, and you talk about that in the book, about mom squads, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, just like you said, like, it's just really important, especially now with all of the quarantine and self-isolation. I mean, people mm -hmm. are starting to go back out again, but nothing like we did, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and with social distancing, I find that already being a mom can feel isolating. And, you know, especially now with everything we're going through with the pandemic, it's even more isolating. So mm -hmm. anything you can do to help build that community is so important and I write about that because that's something I really had to learn. Yeah. But now as a mother, I do feel like it's really important to have that 
whether whoever that is for you, whoever your community is for you. Um, so what what advice, like what kind of advice has your mom squad given you? Like personally, like that you're, you've kind of struggled with? Well, when I had my first, you know, my, my baby, I just had a boy, but when I had my daughter, who's now about two and a half, I went back to work at six weeks and okay. I was directing by the time she was four months old. And I remember talking to Mila about being a working mom and she gave me a really cool piece of advice, which was when you talk to your kids like about going to work, she's never like, oh, that sucks. Mommy has to go to work. She always puts a really positive spin on it. And she's always like, mommy has to go to work. Isn't that awesome? Like she puts a really positive thing on it so that her children associate positivity with work. And that's something wow. I thought was really, really cool, especially because I was struggling so much with going back to work so quickly. Mm. And, um, you know, another example that kind of feeds into the mom guilt of it all is quality over quantity. Um, one yes. of my friends, Amber Tamblin, shared that with me because her daughter's a little older than mine. And <laughs> you can be with your family, but if you're on your phone or fielding emails or- You're not present on social media, whatever you're doing, you're not present. You're not even there. So it's like quality over quantity. When you're with your family, you make it really quality time and you really be present and are there. That's something that really helped me too, is just when I am with my family, having very quality time, don't try to work while I'm with my family. That's something that has really helped me a lot. Something yeah. Like, yeah, it's great. So you open up in the book about, like speaking of being personal from the beginning, that's why I loved about how raw and real you are, because I feel like sometimes that's few and far between with people in the public eye. Um, but you, you had to make an impossible decision during a pregnancy. And, um, and I have known people that have had the same scenario. So what happened you know, with this situation? How did you cope with it? Because a, that's a big thing to open up about. Well, what's interesting is that when I for when we had to make a decision because we found out once we got into the second trimester, by the way, which usually, you know, once you get into that, you're like, I'm in the clear. Yeah. But we found out when we were into our second trimester that there were um, some pretty devastating health problems um, and that the baby was at risk. I was at risk. The baby probably wouldn't survive and that I was at risk for carrying any longer. And we really weren't in a position to, the writing was on the wall. There was nothing we could do. Mm. Um, and it, my, my husband and I often say that was the worst day of our lives, um, making that decision. And it's, once I went through it, I was really mad at my body and myself. Like I thought I did something to cause it, which I didn't. I didn't, yeah. you know, but you just are trying so hard to find an answer and I found that once I went through that, I started finding out these other women who've gone through similar losses mm -hmm. and nobody was talking about it. Yeah. But I felt that it was really important to write about it because mm -hmm. I wanted other people to be able to feel safe to share their story. And mm -hmm. the fact that I wrote about it, I can't tell you how many people have reached out. I can't imagine. how much it's helped them and now they're able to vocalize what they went through or they feel seen and heard and it's something that was really hard for me to share but i'm so glad i did because it it really helped again build this community and made it safe for for people to talk about yeah and i i mean i'm one who loves therapy so i just sometimes like learning and therapy, like just saying it aloud helps you right. heal like just saying it out loud and not keeping it inside and it just kind of building up like saying it aloud helps the person saying it just as much as somebody connecting to the message and feeling the same way. So it's very brave and it's very cool and you're a very strong woman. Um, thank you. All right, well, thank you so much. And Laura's book, everybody, You and I as Mothers, A Raw and Honest Guide to Motherhood is available now. Go and get it, I promise. All you mamas out there, mamas to be, it's a good one. Go find that one. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.